Greetings, colleagues. I am delighted to have the opportunity to share some thoughts with you on integral perspectives and change. So the objectives for this session are first to identify how an integral perspective invites new ways of exploring life's journey. And then let's discover some integral strategies to improve health and well-being. So as I begin, I invite you to reflect on those two objectives, to look at increasing our knowledge on integral perspectives, and then to explore some strategies to implement these in our lives. So having seen those two objectives, I invite you right now to set your intention. What do you want to achieve in our time together? Allowing this burning candle flame to burn brightly and light a new way and deepen our integral understanding. So let's begin. This is a diagram that you know very well. The top part again, just reviewing, is about me as an individual. Very important, we have to strengthen uh, who we are in order to do our work in the world. So the upper part here is my individual. The upper left quadrant, my meaning. You can also think of this as your state of being, your inner world, what matters to you, your thoughts, your feelings, your values, your intentions, your meaning, and conclusions that you bring to any particular thought or feeling, all of those. And remembering that you can share with others when you choose. Now let's go over to the upper right. This is that it quadrant. Anytime anything is outside of ourselves, we're referring to it. It's my exercise. It's what I eat. It's how I find time for myself and I do actions in the world <laughs> to prepare me, say, for a good night's rest. So this is about my body and actions, this quadrant. And the beauty of this is that it is exterior and it's tangible and it's measurable parts of me, my behaviors, my doing. And we're going right now about you individually, but you can simultaneously be putting your client in there as well, because this is it. We're, we're strengthening our who we are, and it's this parallel process of our integrative nurse coach and simultaneously with a client self-development or anybody else that we're working with and, and living with. Let's look at the lower left then. This is the interiority of how I come together with you, how we come together and move and bring our collective intelligences together. So this is our space of shared meaning and relationship. It's about my relationship and my culture. And through conversations and dialogue, we mutually understand and we relate to each other. Let's go over to the external lower right. This is called it's. We're talking about here as family, the staff that you work with on your unit or in your clinic or in your school of nursing, wherever it is, and the hospital. So this is the group process systems and structures. It's the design of things, how things work, the aesthetics. It's the process, the procedures, the system and the structure that explains, it supports, it maps, and it is a measure and it can help guide. Remembering that the upper left and upper right are about an individual. On the left then, and then on the bottom, let's go to the bottom, we'll do that. This is about the group. If we look at the left part of the quadrant, this is about the interiority of me, my, and how we come together, lower left. On the right, then, it is my actions in the world with your actions in the world. And then we bring it together, this it's. And this is our alignment, our alignment of how we come together with a shared purpose and meaning to do our work in the world. Ah, I know you have days like this. How can we find more days like this? There is something when we wake up or we are in that space, it is a flow, spelled F-L-O-W. I also say when I wake up and I'm in the space, and I feel it right now with all of you, 
uh, I'm looking out my window and I'm looking at golden aspens. It's in the 40s. I've got my windows open and it's about 65 out today. Uh, and I feel joy. I feel light inside and and in my environment here in my my quiet office space that uh, it, that uh, helps me stay organized and to focus on my work. So let's explore the integral perspective and see how we can find more days and times to really tap into this uh, experience. And what we will be doing then is from an integral perspective is weaving, connecting dots, look at the enfolding, the unfolding, and the arising of possibilities. So this is a diagram that uh, is in your textbook. And let's just go over this together. The common belief structures for change. We have general ideas, so let's just go over this and then we will do our integrative nurse coach. So the individual inter interior, when we look at change, change occurs through insight from inside the client, inside you, and this alone will create new features. If we look at our it, our exterior, our actions in the world, change occurs through new doings. And by accountability, and we could say to a professional coach, since this is what we're speaking about right now with this. Let's look at the we, this intersubjective lower space. This is the group interior. This is how I come together with you in this particular moment in time. And, uh, and I right now am exchanging some ideas with you. And then as soon as I finish, uh, your faculty will then engage you in some uh, practice uh, experiences to deepen this. So change occurs through conversation with another. It's the connection that enables access to new insights and realities. Now let's go to the lower right, the inner objective, the group exterior. Again, this can be family. It can be the unit you work in, the larger hospital, uh, other kinds of organizations that you do, PTA, church, community activities. But in this group, this is our collective intelligence that become aligned in the exterior space and change occurs through the optimization of a person's fit and function in the context of the system in which they participate. So let's then go to our integrative nurse coach approach to change. The individual interior, and looking here, you can see there's a structure of a person that's sitting down with his or her arms out. So the client becomes aware of their current way of seeing and relating to their topic and develops a new way of relating and experience to his or her topic about self, other things, or as we're doing with the integral wording, the I, the we, the it. So the exterior individual, individual exterior, this is my actions in the world. It is your actions in the world. It is the client's actions in the world about how they want to begin to make some changes. So the client engages in integrally designed exercises and practice that involve new doings and new scenes to develop needed skills and capacities. So we, when we say about their integrally designed practices, whatever it is that they're doing, if they're putting on tennis shoes, this is action in the world, but then begin to look at the I, we, the it, and the it's about how they express their actions in the world connected to their individual and where it helps them with the we and the it's. Let's shift down now to the lower left. This is where the client gains new insights and understanding through very powerful conversations with you, the coach. And the beauty of this work, and y'all have seen it with your, uh, the clients you're coaching, you've seen it with your awareness partners, with your uh, peer aware partners, and there is something that happens when we sit with another who is holding that container, that space, to listen to the threads of our story, there is a shared intimacy and meaning that is supports and it models relationship potential. It's very sacred work. And we have to hold that space. Let's shift over to the yet then. This is where the client more objectively begins to see how they fit into the family system, how they fit into the environment at work. What are the roles that they play? What kind of shifts can they make there? And how changing their internal as well as their external environment can change themselves. 
So it's putting all of these, the individual interior and exterior, uh, together. So let's look at the middle of the coaching conversation. And this is what is so exciting about this work, is when we're coaching, of course we have on our expert cap. We never lose that. At any given time, we are doing, we're listening, and we're our our mind is doing all the differential diagnosis and, and assessments and putting all of those pieces together. But when we're listening to the story, we're going to a different space. At any given time, we can stop and go to that if the expert uh, needs to come in at that particular point. But let's look at the middle of these coaching conversations. So just, uh, I put a few cu uh, curious questions here. And again, they're not doing any kind of sequence, but just to give some ideas of that individual interior. So we're coaching someone, and so someone has just told us about something that they're doing and it's different, it's making them feel different inside, they have a new awareness and stuff. And so you might just say something like, so what arises for you as you connect with hearing your voice then? And what does that mean to you? Another type of question. How do you feel as you hear yourself say that? And having just said that, I've never heard you express that. What might be a new perspective here for you? Let's stay with the individual now and go to the exterior. So again, some possibilities of what they want to do. And they've just shared with something on this individual about what they're, they want to do, new insights. And then you continue with that. Well, what do you see yourself doing differently now, having those new insights? Do you think perhaps you could try it maybe this way? Or what way are you looking at it? And what might be a new goal for next week? Wow, as I listen to you say that, I'm really thinking this is going to help you accomplish your objective. Now, I remember last week you did, and carry it wherever it leads. Again, no right or wrong question you can rephrase. Let's go down to the lower left, the we. You're sitting there in this deep container, in, container and, you, and you really take a deep dive in there. And you might say, I totally see what you're saying. You know, I felt that too. Well, this really must be difficult. And again, as I'm looking at that question there, I totally see what you're saying. I might say that, and then I will say, let me step back. You know, I would like to say, I do not see what you're saying. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Again, we always can rephrase. And because we have built this container of trust, this relationship, we can show our vulnerabilities and we can rephrase it. Remember, this is not about being perfect. It's about being curious. Let's go to the lower it's then. Some curious questions here in the middle of a conversation. So what do you see your role at work? Maybe one or two things. Let's shift over to now taking that in. So what is your, your role at home and how do you see yourself fitting in with the family now with you wanting to make this change? Another curious question, just describe to me your work environment. And how does that work environment differ from your home environment? Just so many different ways. And so I hope you're beginning to see how to take a deeper dive in using the integral. And at any given time, whatever one person says in one quadrant, remember this is the key to the integral perspective. If you leave out any one of these uh, quadrants, as Ken Wilber says, you're going to have a hemorrhage. They're not going to stick together and you get dominant in one area. And this is what happens in our healthcare system right now. <clears throat> so what do we know about our work. We're trying to help people look at the pros and cons of change. So always we know is it's important not to move a person fast. So again, get them to really weigh. Let's look at the pros and cons about some of the things you want to go here. So what are the pros? If you don't change right now, 
what are some of the advantages of staying the same? What's the advantages at the status quo? The cons then, so let's say someone wants to begin to lose weight. Well, I can, I, that's the first one that popped in my mind there because um, I have uh, been eating out a little bit too much. Um, I need to cut back on uh, my wine uh, a little bit, uh, not two glasses, but one glass at night. I need to uh, be having more foods available in the house. And, and so I have all of this stuff. So that's what's going to help me. So the downside, if I don't change coming up into holiday season, I am not going to be happy. Some of my winter clothes that I love that fit more snugly, I'm not going to be comfortable in, but I would like to wear them this coming season. So the downside of staying the same is I'm going to feel irritated with myself which I don't have to do, but I can begin to look at putting a little bit of possibilities of the change. So this is what comes with change. So again, don't go right to the change, but what's some of the downside of changing? Well, it is going to require a little bit more work and attention and being really aware and conscious of the choices and what I put into my mouth and my portion size. <laughs> and then to change and to sustain that change, the advantages of changing. And it just feels fantastic to go to my closet and put anything on to feel good in it and to be able to eat what I want, portion control, and eat quality food and just dive into the hear, see, feel, touch, and taste of the dinner by myself or with friends and how I'm going to do that. So let's move forward with our integral perspective. How do we turn on that light and sustain it? This integral perspective, the I, the we, the it, and the its. Remember, we're trying to, at any given time, shift through an awareness of these spaces. So if I stay in my I space, how is it going to help me in my we space? How is it going to help me with my individual actions in the world and then with the group collective? So this integral perspective is very, very deep. It is very, very rich. And it invites us to create that shift in consciousness of our body, mind, spirit, cultural environment, where we have an increased awareness and choice. So this integral perspective, it is the creative fire to uncover and recover and support and celebrate the creative self. It helps us become that artist healer. We, we are the artist healer. How do we drop into it where we live our life responsive to service, both spiritual and practical? It helps us navigate those rough waters with greater complexity in connectivity in the complexity. So looking at that integral perspective, this requires that we give attention and intention into the work. Attention is notice taken of someone or something Regarding of someone or something as interesting or as important, we get bored. How do we create novelty in our life? Intention. That is that conscious awareness of being in the present moment to help facilitate the healing process. And it truly is a volitional act of unconditional love for ourself and for another. Intuition and embodied awareness arises when we look at the integral perspective. So intuition, as we know, is that perceived knowing of things and events without the conscious use of rational processes, using all of our senses to receive and process information. So embodied awareness is that state of being mindful and consciously in the present moment. Change takes place in the present moment. So this integral perspective then is about health. Health from an integral perspective, from a cultural perspective. How I define health, I will entail a lot of these possibilities that you see here in this general definition. But how I interpret health will not always, will not be the same as yours or anybody else in the room. It is very personal. So health is that process of reshaping our basic assumptions and worldviews about the physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, and cultural environment. And it may include living with a disease and illness or symptoms. Also part of this about health is death is seen as a natural process of living. Well-being, this is the way a person thinks and feels about basic assumptions of life and what is valued and meaningful 
is very important. The integral perspective about healing. Healing is not just a chain of words that fit together, but healing is this lifelong journey of discovery at the deepest level of inner knowing what we have closed down and opened to new ways of being all of our life to the very last breath. It is identifying our strengths, those pre-existing patterns of thoughts and feeling and behaviors that are authentic and energizing that lead to the best potentials and possibilities. The integral perspective includes spirituality in all of these domains. Spirituality in the I, the we, the it and its. It is that sense of connectedness with something higher and absolute imminent or transcendent power, however you name it, and the conviction that meaning, value, and direction and purpose are valid aspects of the universe. So our integral perspective also must incorporate us acknowledging ourselves as a wounded healer. A wounded healer is one who must deal with his or her personal wounds and vulnerabilities as she or he attends to the wounds and the vulnerabilities of others. And that is in that physical, mental, social, spiritual, cultural, and, and environmental experiences. As you see from this precious painting by Cynthia Stebolt of three angels, look at the one in the center and you see a wounded spot on the upper right shoulder. This wounded one also has two others to tell his or her story to. And this is the beauty of the coaching, is that we sit there, we do not have to fix. A wound is there and we do not take it away. We do not fix it. But as we begin to sit with the personal wound and the vulnerability of our own, and we address these, then we are much more capable of helping address these with the people that we coach. So let's look at the integral quadrant and the six lines of the development. This is absolutely key. And these six lines of development, after uh, we finish uh, this PowerPoint, you will be working with your uh, faculty and again, identifying specific um, questions on each of these, two or three on each one, about how you strengthen the moral, the spiritual, moral, and a personal, somatic, emotional, and cognitive. These lines of development are also in that lower we. They are in the upper right as well, the actions in the world. How do you model each of those in the world and their specific? And then in the lower uh, it's, uh, these uh, lines of development are indeed here. And when you see the tool that you will be working with in the upper the left, the questions, the, all the questions that they're saying except for a shift in one were one or two words in each of the quadrants. In the upper left, the, the uh, practice tool will ask you to look at your inner self. The upper right, the tool will have the same questions, but it will act to ask you to look at your body. The we will be the two words that shift or relational shift. And the it's, the two words in that with the questions are the world itself. And remember, you're developing these in each one, and this is how we strengthen and go deeper into our inner development. We're looking at polarities in life, remembering that independent pairs of differences, competing or opposite values or points of view that are required in order to get through life. It's a both and thinking, it is not an either or. And Bonnie Rosorig's work, I really like so much on this. She says that each polarity has an identified upside values, and it has a downside, which are the fears. So we must explore together to find one's life's balance. So example polarities, personal life and work. Think about this from an integral perspective. Staff satisfaction and patient satisfaction. Again, think of it from the integral perspective. So what is your integral story on suffering and soul pain? You are the storyteller about your I, we, it, and its. The client is his or her storyteller. So what gifts and reflections are you sharing with yourself? What are you embracing as you tell yourself your story? Because this creates the narrative meaning. It's dynamic and it involves all of our senses, actions, body sensations, feelings, energy, all those lines of development. 
So this integral perspective, again, about the I, we, it, and it, keeping a little light open as we deal with the suffering. And we know suffering, and I love Cinda De uh, Rushton's definition in her book, Moral Resilience, a new book out in 2018. An individual's experience of struggle based on a reinforced story around anxiety, distress, or pain. And it manifests as behavioral, emotional, mental, moral, physical, social, or spiritual signs of distress. It's an anguish experienced the internal and external, as a threat to one's composure, integrity, sense of self or fulfillment of expectations. The soul pain, this is the experience of an individual who has become disconnected and alienated from the deepest and most fundamental aspect of oneself. So again, from an integral perspective, the I, we, it, and it, when we speak about soul's purpose, let yourself take a deep dive and, and, so, and when you say soul's purpose, it arises from sourcing a felt sense of profound meaning, intention, and focus about one's life and work. When you explore and deepen your soul's purpose, let it be from an integral perspective of the why I, the we, the it, and the it's. It takes you to a profound, deeper space. Soul's wisdom. This is sourcing action from that deepest place within so that motivation for action and challenges may emerge. So the integral perspective then about how do we raise the positivity? So what's working right now? When you focus on your strengths, what kind of creativity, joy, energy, and resilience come forward? When you switch on being positive in the present moment, what do we know happened? <laughs> It changes the formula of who you are. The dopamine floods the brain and the body begins having this ripple effect and you just, you, you just, ah, you're on fire. Part of this is practicing three gratitudes, three integral practices of journal, exercise, mindfulness, practicing random acts of kindness. What do we know? You tried for 21 days and your brain will re retrain with new currencies and new possibilities. The neuroplasticity that you've heard throughout all of this course, and you read about it many different places, the heart and the brain are connected. So cells that fire together wire together. So just ask yourself right now, as you're moving through this I, we, it, and it, what thoughts are firing and wiring together? This is what brings that balance uh, together in life. And this is when right now you can heart breathe in your heart area, you just take that breath in and out through your heart. And uh, this is a group of inks out on a deck, heart breathing together in that space. So let's kind of begin to summarize with some possibilities. The first one starts where you must learn to love yourself unconditionally. With all of your warts, with all of your weaknesses, and know that every bit of that is part of who you are. Own it. Learn to love yourself. This is not being egomaniacal. But when you treat yourself like a sacred piece of art, and what do you do with something that you really love? You take care of it and you hold it. You have to do this to yourself. Here's one of the things I would say is, let yourself, to strengthen the I, we, it, and it, let go of being a tech slave. Reduce the time on the digital grid. And what you do is when you free up that time, you then increase your cognitive bandwidth to strengthen all of your lines of development. Let yourself do something with a somatic response. When was the last time you can remember jumping as high as you possibly could? If you can't do that, what can you stretch and begin to feel a different space? It, it's just a body movement. I can sit in a chair and just expand like this. And when I do that, and I just did this, and I'm looking at that golden aspen out there, ah, something lit up inside me. When you put on these shoes, think of it from an integral perspective. What is it that opened it up for you and fires? 
What is this we space when you decide to do some practices with some of the people in your neighborhood or in your group and you do it out on a deck or you're looking at something beautiful in the environment? All of this will richen and deepen that experience of loving exercise. Finding time by yourself to get into that eye space, to ask the deeper reflections of yourself. Find something that you absolutely love. And if I can sit still long enough, oh man, you will find me doing needlepoint. And here's even in a tent uh, at 10,500 feet. I've, uh, yes, we took in horses uh, 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 on this particular trip because this tapestry weighs about 20 pounds. It is now finished and actually uh, you can see it behind me uh, on my wall. It is finished. Um, what is it that you love to do uh, with your family? This is Larry and me and we've been backpacking and hiking and camp camping for over 40 years and it's something that absolutely turns us on and we take time out to do this because it just lights the fire inside of us. We collect heart rocks. This is a large heart rock that Larry founded down in our arroyo, which is our creek out here. And he put it on, when we built our house, he put it on the rock pile for uh, the uh, stonemasons, didn't tell them what to do with it. And he even turned it upside down and it was brown on the other side. And when they saw this rock, this is what they did with it. We also collect rocks when we go out on our walks. We have a lot of stone uh, in our area and we uh, th it just pleases us to be looking for something, a uh, novelty here. Well, we take a lot of hikes too. There's something about being a, out in nature and being able to uh, do forest bathing, uh, nature bathing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and if you can find a place to put your feet on the ground to really do that grounding practice. Uh, walking a labyrinth. This is the beautiful uh, labyrinth up at Harmony Hill Retreat Center uh, in uh, uh, Union, Washington. And Gretchen, the founder of uh, Harmony Hill, named the tree that doesn't grow in this particular area. And it's a huge, gigantic spruce tree. And she named this tree She Who Knows. And all of the white that you see are oyster shells that uh, people helped her uh, do this uh, full circuit labyrinth. Finding time for yourself, just to kick back. We're coming into the change of seasons. What will you be doing when you have some cold weather? Uh, uh, what are you doing about the somatic of exercising and swimming? Uh, you are not only in a pool swimming, but simultaneously think about the I, we, the it, and the it's about <laughs> where this. So the lower right would be swimming either in your own pool or in a club or in a neighborhood pool. The we is other people uh, swimming together. The it is your individual action of man. I, you know, you can even sit here and you can swim when you're sitting in a chair and get your heart rate up. And it's the I about this neater, this deep space inside. Ah, does anyone ever do that? Uh, this is exactly what I'm doing right now. I am uh, weighing every day. I'm starting uh, my day. I love to do apple cider vinegar as a way to wake up my uh, digestive system, to sit there and mindfully drink apple cider vinegar, about you know a tablespoon or so in hot water. And uh, then I will uh, go out for a little bit of a walk, a short walk for 10 or 15 minutes to get going. Then I will come back and uh, do a smoothie or um, whatever I feel like eating. But again, small portions, live food, and waking up to being very mindful so that I have my ideal weight <gasps> come Thanksgiving. Think of this, this is not just a beautiful plate of a robust white flaky fish with potatoes and olives. But how do you fit this into an integral perspective? Oh, I can imagine what it feels like just to eat this. The external it is preparing that food, making it beautiful. The we is sharing this meal with family or friends. And the lower right then is how do I get this kind of uh, food in hospitals or working with people uh, to eat nutritiously.
how do I choose these foods from an I, we, it, its perspective? Think about this. This is not just pretty fruit and you do something. Let it infuse you from an integral perspective. The we, the relational, how much fun is it to act silly with our colleagues? You've had the opportunity to uh, do your story of suffering and to share it with others and remember what that was like when you held the space for your colleague to share his or her story with you and to continue in your small discussions that you've had. How important is this to listen to other people's story because other people's story inform us about who we are. And this is what it is about. It's coming together, putting our hands on top of each other and in this collective we space so that we can transform individually and collectively our interior and exterior. And this truly is about love. And I love a quote from Nightingale to love. That is to help one another, to strive together, to work together, to work to the same end. So summarizing this integral perspective, when we look at an I, we, it, its perspective, it will assist us with healing and our wholeness. This integral perspective requires that we source our soul's wisdom, self-reflection, and self-care. And with an integral perspective and a worldview of wholeness, we can share the depth of our professional knowledge, expertise, our critical thinking capacities, and skills for assisting others so that they can create help through their stories of healing, local to global. And when we explore an integral perspective, we are practicing the art and science of healing. We strengthen our personal and professional capacities. And we know that beyond the fix lies balance. So what does this balance look like in real life for you? Let's remember that it involves honoring all of life. So I hope that you are tapping into a few new possibilities of looking at an integral perspective to move to completing this part of who you are now and taking it to the next level of the journey. And let's bring Florence Nightingale into our work as we move forward as integrative nurse coaches out in the world. 1870, Nightingale began to write in her diary. It's going to take 150 years for the world to see the kind of nursing that I envisioned. So 1870 plus 150, that's 2020. And guess what? 2020 is the bicentenary of Florence Nightingale's birth, 1820 to 1910. I invite you to go to www.nivision.net and to see a lot of activities that are going around now about the 2020 bicentenary. And the World Health Organization declared 2020 is the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife. So May 12, 2020 is Florence Nightingale's 200th birthday. And our challenge right now is to explore these UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And what you're seeing there, they are referred to as the SDGs. And this UN agenda goes out to 2030. It is aligned with our healthy people, healthy nation here in the United States that also goes out to 2030. And these 17 UN SDGs, are in, we are engaged with them all the time. Um, number 13, climate action, is the biggest one. If we don't do that one, it doesn't matter about the others. But what I say to you is look at several articles uh, that will uh, be in your Dropbox if they're not in there right now uh, that uh, Diva Marie Beck and Billy Rosa and I have written on the SDGs. Good health and well-being has got nurses written all over it. At any given time, when you discharge someone from a hospital and, or, or a clinic and you're looking at what are they going to eat that night, uh, are they living uh, in, at poverty level, uh, are, are, are these kids going to uh, getting any kind of education, uh, look at clean water and sanitation, it's huge. All of these are part of who, who we are. And we don't have to go to third world countries. We must engage in all of these right now. And I will say that all the 193 member states of the UN around the world are engaged in this. 
and we have 20 plus million nurses and midwives around the world who are also engaged in these SDGs. And we can make a huge difference as the largest group of healthcare professionals. Florence Nightingale's last great essay in 1893 titled Sick Nursing and Health Nursing. And in this, she says, health is not only to be well, but to use well every power we have. I want to close this session, this integral session, with a flame of Florence Nightingale's legacy. And as I read this, let yourself be touched from an integral perspective. Today, our world, lower right, needs healing and to be rekindled with love. Once Florence Nightingale lit her beacon of lamplight to comfort the wounded. And her light has blazed a path of service across a century to us. Through her example and through the countless nurses and healers who have followed in her footsteps. Today, we celebrate the flame of Florence Nightingale's legacy. Let that same light be rekindled too to burn bright in all of our hearts. Let us take up our own lanterns of caring, each in our own ways, to more brightly walk our own path of service to the world, to more clearly share our own noble purpose with each other. May human caring become the lantern for the 21st century, that we may better care for ourselves, for others, and for all of creation. May we be the keepers of that flame, that our spirits may burn brightly, to kindle the hearts of our children and our great-grandchildren as they too follow in these footsteps. A poem written by our colleague Diva Marie Beck in 1996 in Istanbul at the barracks, where Florence Nightingale served. So I want to say thank you to all of you for sharing this time with me as we collectively put our we together to strengthen integrative nurse coaching and our voice in the world. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. And uh, Susan and I, with all of the faculty, are so excited that you are joining us on this integrative nurse coach movement and taking it to the next level. Journey well. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. <laughs>